I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on conic sections. This series is developed for my brilliant student Aryan from North Carolina, US. He is a grade 8 student, grade 8 student trying to understand conics, doing math 3. So I hope this will help many of our subscribers on YouTube channel to understand the difficult concept of conics early on. I have made this presentation in the first part. I'm going to show you visually what are we trying to learn and then take four related examples. With the help of examples, you will get the math part of it. So, we'll do mathematics with visual understanding. That will help you to understand the concepts and do the questions without using any formula or rule. You get my point. We'll understand the concept so that you can easily do your questions without memorizing the formulae. If you start memorizing formulae, you will be lost just as Aryan was lost before coming to me. So now let's try to understand transformational equation of parabola. What you see here is a parabola which is opening on the right hand side. Normally, you see parabola opening upwards or downwards. So first thing first, when you see something in a different direction, it becomes even more difficult. Why not? Understand from this perspective, a parabola which is opening right. So remember, the parabola can open in any of these four directions, left, right, up or down. The only difference is when the parabola opens in the right, what we get as the main variable is x, the dependent variable. The independent variable becomes y. You understand? As if the axis has been rotated. Do you understand? So that is how it becomes. So now the equation of parabola, which normally you see in terms of y equals to something, is now written as what? x equals to a y minus k whole square plus h. You get the idea. So have a good look at this equation. It is for the parabola which is opening right. And of course, if the value of a is negative, it will open in which direction? Left. So we are covering in this particular video a visual presentation for a parabola which is opening towards the right direction. A value is positive, that means correct. Now, important things to understand in transformed parabola is the vertex itself. Now, this vertex at present is at the origin. And when a curve goes through the origin, it is a standard parabola if the value of A is 1. So, this dotted blue curve is the standard parabola. Now, if I change the value of A, then this curve stretches or compresses. The position shown here in red is for a compressed parabola. You get the idea? Now, let us see how does it look like when it is stretched. A is changing. The graph of the parabola is getting stretched. Well, when it kind of becomes narrower, we call it stretched. And when it expands, as it is doing now, it is being compressed. You can see that. So the value of A, which we are looking at, what is happening to this? It is changing, of course. Correct? So we call this as A is a stretch factor in transformational equation. But when it is in a position, when it is narrow, it is stretched. When it is vertically stretched, the value of A is greater than 1. 
it becomes narrower and narrower as you can see. But when it gets compressed, the value of A becomes less than 1 as in this particular region. So you can see, when we change the value of A, what happens to the parabola? The curve becomes narrow, narrow, narrow. And when we decrease the value of A, the curve expands as showing here. Now, as the curve moves, you must have also noticed that the other parameters, vertex, focus, and directrix also move. I would like you to now focus on how the focus and directrix are changing. As it becomes narrower, focus comes closer to the vertex. Now, when it compresses, that means wider, you see the focus going up, right? So in this position, focus is much more than what it was since the value of A is lower. You get the idea? And directrix is the same distance away. So what you notice here is that from focus, we have both, from vertex, we have both focus and directrix the same distance. Focus distance from vertex increases as the value of A decreases. That means the curve becomes wider. And directrix is the same distance away. Vertex is the midpoint of both directrix and focus. You get the idea, right? Now see how the focus decreases. It decreases as the value of A increases. It is inversely proportional. The distance is actually one-fourth of 1 over A. So that is kind of the relation between directrix, vertex, and focus as the value of A changes. So I hope you are absolutely clear about the characteristics of parabola when A changes. So A is called the stretch factor. So you once again have a close look at variation of A and how the focus, vertex, and directrix will change with A. You see, the vertex remains same because 0 times anything is 0. So, vertex maintains its position. However, focus, directrix, and in the graph also, you can see it stretches and widens, as you can see. So, it becomes narrow when A is greater than 1 and wider when A is less than 1. Perfect. So now we are going to look into the variation with respect to horizontal and vertical translation. So how will the graph horizontally move or vertically move? Well, it is because of H and K in the equation. So we have to look into the variation with H and K. So now, let me stop this A at a fixed point. So let us say A is less than 1. In that case, it will be in this part. Correct? Now, we will see what happens when we want to change the graph horizontally and vertically. So these are the two factors which we are going to change. You need to tell me which one is being changed at present. So, we'll move this graph horizontally. Do you see? Now, vertex moves horizontally. However, the distance between the vertex and the focus remains constant. F, V, and D. All these three points are relatively at a fixed distance. But the position of all the three is moving left or right. Perfect. Now, what do you think? Which parameter is changing at present? Is it the value of k or h? Well, h is the x value, which is now adding or subtracting from the current position. As h changes, the graph horizontally translates as it is being shown here. So I hope this part is absolutely clear. It is because of the variation of h. So, H is the horizontal translation. Perfect. We can now stop this part and see how will the graph look like if we translate it vertically, right? For vertical translation, 
which parameter should change? Well, it should be k. So now let's change k and see what happens in this particular graph. Okay, so let me stop it somewhere in this portion and see what happens with the variation of k. It vertically moves as expected. You get the idea. So that is the transformation which we are looking into. I hope you have understood with this how the parameters a, h and k affect the position of the graph. Changing h and k, performing horizontal and vertical translations, the size of the graph remains exactly same. We say they are congruent. However, once you change a, in that case, the graph is not congruent. The graph will either stretch or it will widen as being shown. So at present you see the transformations all changing one after the other. So now when H and K both change along with A, then the graph of parabola may look something like this. You can also see how the distance between the vertex and the focus changes with the change in these parameters. We will now look at the mathematical aspect and relate all these terms and then also sketch the graph for different conditions. I hope you have understood what we are trying to show you graphically here. With this clear idea in mind, let's move on to our classroom type questions. I hope you enjoyed the visual presentation of parabola opening on the right side as shown in this particular figure. So what you saw is that we have a standard parabola which is shown in the dotted part. Since it is opening on the right, the equation will be x equals to y square. So this equation is x equals to y square since the parabola is opening on the right side. Now this is the axis. Axis is along the x-axis and the equation of the axis right here is y equals to zero. What you also saw is that when we translate the parabola, in that case, changing the value of h and k, moves it left or right with h and up and down with k. So the axis actually does not change for the change in a or in change in h. So we'll talk about axis now a bit more. So as far as the axis is concerned, which is axis of symmetry. It is at y equals to 0. It changes for which variation? It changes with change in the, it changes vertically with change in the value of k, right? So the y value. Otherwise, it does not change. So when the value of k changes, only then it changes. Now coming back to the transformational equation of parabola, the parameters which affect the transformation are A, which causes vertical stretch factor, H, which causes horizontal translation, and K, which is a vertical translation. So the vertex, focus, directrix all change its position horizontally in this case if I do a variation in h. The change in position vertically, if I do a variation in k, correct? With the change in a, what changes? p changes, the distance between focus and the vertex. And with that,
the distance between the directrix and the vertex also change. So P, the distance from the vertex to focus is actually equal to 1 over 4A. So clearly, if A changes, P changes. That means the distance between the focus and the vertex changes. For any point in general, when we define a parabola, any point on the curve, let us say we have a point on the curve which is P. In that case, distance of P from focus is same as the distance of P from the direct side. So these two distances are same. So let us say this is point M. In that case, we know that PM is equal to PF. And that is how we actually define a parabola. Is this part clear to you, right? So PXY is the same distance from focus and the directories. Now, based on all this information, we will have four questions in which you have to do what? You need to identify the vertex, the focus, axis of symmetry, and the equation for directories, and then sketch the graph. We'll have four questions in which we are going to do it. Now, just a quick reminder of the formula, which is basically the same as y equals to a, x minus h whole square plus k. Now, you know a and p are related. So, we could write y in terms of 1 over p, 4p, right? So, instead of a, 1 over 4p, x minus h whole square plus k. Now, this is the equation when it opens up. If it is opening down, in that case, it would be negative. So, that is reflected on the x-axis. If the parabola, as shown, is opening in the right direction, in that case, x becomes the independent variable, y becomes the dependent variable. You have a similar equation. Only thing is, horizontal and vertical has been interchanged. And with negative, we have a parabola which opens in the left direction. So, the equations for different openings of the parabola are given here as a quick reference. However, with the concepts learned, it should not be difficult for you to apply the concepts and get the answer. The whole idea here is to solve the questions and get the right answer by common sense. Now, with this understanding, let us take the four questions of our interest. The questions before us are, you need to use this transformational equation of parabola. Since the parabola has been transformed, the standard equation in the transformed form will be 1 over 4p x minus h whole square plus k. And as you know, in this equation, the value of p is equal to 1 over 4a, right? So when we are talking about the equation in terms of this stretch factor a, so general equation which is written as y equals to a x minus h whole square plus k in that you could replace a with 1 over 4p, right? So you could also write this as 1 over 4p times x minus h whole square plus k, correct? So that is the case when we are opening the parabola vertically. Is that clear to you? So in that case, this becomes our equation. Now, in general, what we will see is that we will identify the vertex, focus, axis of symmetry, and the direction of, and the directrix of each given parabola. After we find these parameters, after that, we are going to sketch the parabola. The four equations given to you are, y equals to 2 times x plus 1 whole square minus 8. Question number 2, x equals to minus 1 over 4, y plus 2 whole square. y minus 4 equals to minus x plus 5 whole square. And the fourth one is challenging question for you. Minus 1 over 4x plus half equals to minus 
y minus 1 whole square. I'd like you to pause the video at this stage, answer this question, and then look into my suggestions. Now, before you attempt, look at the question and try to understand the direction in which each parabola is going to open. The very first one is y is changing with respect to x. So, x is along the horizontal axis, correct? And this parabola is with positive value of a, so it opens upwards. In question number 2, x is now the independent variable and therefore it has to open left or right. Since we have negative here, this parabola should open left. The third one, y minus 4. We only brought this term which was constant on the left hand side, but more or less it is the same thing. With negative leading coefficient, so this coefficient is negative, so the parabola is going to open down. And in the third case, we have x as the independent variable and they are negative and this is also negative so it is tricky correct so that is a challenge for you so you need to figure this out in which direction will it open and how will you calculate all the values now let's look into attempting how do we solve such a question without actually remembering most of the equations okay that's the whole thing so here is the very first question let us try to understand how do we figure out the solution question is identify vertex focus axis of symmetry and directrix for each right the very first one equation y equals to let me rewrite this y equals to 2 times x plus 1 whole square minus 8. Now, from this equation, clearly, you get the vertex, right? So, what is the vertex? Vertex position is x value has to be minus 1 and the y value has to be minus 8. So, we got the vertex clearly. So, we can mark this vertex here, minus 1 and minus 8 is the vertex. We also see that the leading coefficient a is positive. So, we know that a equals to plus, right? So, plus 2, that means it opens up, right? So, that means the parabola in this case will open up. As I can write here and show you, correct? So, that is how my parabola is going to be. Now, since it opens up, let me make a bigger picture here. Since it opens up, the axis will be along which direction? Well, the axis will be going right through the center right so that becomes our axis since the vertex is right there and vertex is at minus 1 minus 8 the equation of the axis will be what well the equation of the axis will be the x value the x value is minus 1 so vertical line right so what we got here first thing first we got the vertex as shown here and now we are working actually on the axis of symmetry. So, axis of symmetry, which is shown right there, will go through the x value of the vertex. So, clearly, we can write down the axis of symmetry. Now, let's look into the focus part. Focus is related with the position. Focus will be changed, right, to a point which is above the vertex in this case since it opens up right so it is opening up so we have to add the value to it and this value which we are adding is what is plus p how do we find p this becomes our next question we know p is equals to 1 over 4 a in our case the value of a is 2 so it becomes 1 over 4 times 2 and we get the value of p as 1 over a as soon as you get this value, you can actually get the point focus, right? So, what is the focus now? Well, focus coordinate, it has moved up P units and P, as we can see, is 1 over 8. And the position of the vertex is minus 1 minus 8. The X value remains same. The Y value will change, right? So, to the value, which is minus 8, we are going to add 
1 over 8. Is that clear to you? So when you add this, you get your focus. minus 1 minus 63 over 8. As you can see, focus is vertically above the vertex and the distance between focus and the vertex is 1 over 8. So when you add to the y value, you get the focus value x is symmetry, x equals to minus 1, the x values for both focus and vertex are same. Now find the equation for the directrix line. It is just below the vertex, same distance away as the focus was. That means you will subtract the value of p to get the equation of directrix. So y in this case will be equal to what? find the value and write it down. Minus 8 minus 1 over 8. Correct. Which is equal to what? Minus 65 over 8. So I hope you have understood how do we get all these critical points without even remembering any formula. So the basic concept helps to figure out all these points, which is how do we identify vertex, focus, axis of symmetry, and the equation for directrix. Here I have provided you with the complete solution. Once again, the equation given to us was y equals 2. 2 times x plus 1 whole square minus 8. It could be written in the form with p. And what is p? p is equal to 1 over 4a. Substituting the value of a as equal to 2, we get the value of p, which is 1 over 8. Now we are ready to write down all the parameters, vertex, focus, axis of symmetry, and the directrix. Well, clearly, the vertex, you can read the values from the equation h and k. So the vertex is minus 1, minus 8. To get the value of focus, we know the axis is the vertical, x equals to minus 1. It will be same for vertex and focus. The y value, we have to add the value of p. So minus 8 plus 1 over 8 will be the y position coordinate value for the focus, which is minus 63 over 8. Axis of symmetry being x equals to minus 1. Find the equation of directrix also. Now let us see how do we solve this equation x equals to minus 1 over 4, y plus 2 whole square. First thing first. In which direction will this parabola open? Yes, it is opening towards the left side since x equals 2 and we have y plus 2 whole square. Find the vertex. First thing, vertex is x value of 0, y value of minus 2. So we get the value of the vertex. The axis is horizontal which will go through the vertex itself, correct? So now, find what the focus should be. Well, how will you find the focus? You need to find the value of p, the distance from focus to the vertex, and that will be on the axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry will be the horizontal line, as you can see here. The equation of this line should be what? y equals to minus 2.
So we know the vertex, we know the axis. Now we need to find what P is to find the focus. P is equal to 1 over 4A and A is minus 1 over 4. Keep that in mind and then calculate the y coordinate of x and y coordinate of focus. P is considered to be a distance and therefore I wrote minus P. But strictly speaking, when you calculate the value of P, in itself it is negative 1 over 4. So we don't have to write minus P comma minus 2 for focus. We know that the focus is on the left side of the vertex and therefore left side of 0, 1 unit will be minus 1. So the focus is minus 1 minus 2. Directrix will be a line perpendicular to the axis. Same distance away from the vertex as from the focus. So vertex is the midpoint. So P units on the right of 0. That means x equals to 1 should be the equation of the directrix. Is this clear to you? Perfect. So I hope you have understood the method of does make sense to you. So I hope the steps are absolutely clear. I would like you to write down the complete solution. Right? Let's move on to question number three. The question number three is y minus four equals to minus x plus five whole square. So let's rewrite the question here. We have y minus 4 equals to minus of x plus 5 whole square. In which direction will this parabola open? Let's try to figure this out. Well, this is a standard form where y is the independent variable. Minus means it is going to open in downward direction as shown here. Correct? Let's look at the approach once again from a different perspective. So, it has a vertex and the axis will be along from the vertex going in this particular direction. We can straight away read the vertex which is the variation in x and y. The translation, the x value has moved minus 5, right? And the y value has changed to 4, right? So that is the variation and we get the vertex. So we have the vertex as minus 5, 4 in this particular case. Let's find the value of p which is 1 over 4a. As clearly, p, a is 1, right? So it is 1 over 4 minus 1, which is minus 1 over 4. So we get the value of p, which is minus 1 over 4. As far as the focus is concerned, focus will be below the vertex. And therefore, the focus will be along the same axis, equation of axis, let's write down that which is equal to x equals to minus 5. So let me also write down x is x equals to minus 5. So the x value will be minus 5 for the focus. However, the point y will be 4 minus 1 over 4. Correct? So it is going to be minus 5. 4 times 4 is 16. And so you get 15. Take away 1 will give you the focus. The directories will be above and so that equation will be what? The y value for the directrix will be 4 plus 1 over 4 which is 17 over 4. Is that clear? So it is that easy. So once you get into this practice, it becomes very, very simple to do these questions. Here is a better view of what we just did you can actually get some values using the table. In this case, what important values which we should consider to graph? Let me discuss that with you. How do we draw a good graph? To draw a good graph, 
we should always start with the vertex. So that is the first point and then we can look into the y intercept and then we should find the x intercept. Well, x intercept you may not have or you may have two points. So as far as x intercept we have three options. There could be none, there could be one or there could be two, right? So there are three options for x intercepts which you can figure out from the direction of opening and the vertex clear. But anyway, you get these. And so you have to have at least three points to sketch a graph and make a table like this, right? So make a table. Just plug in the values for x and get the value of y. You could do very easily and find some points to sketch the graph. Once you have these points, you can sketch it. Now let's come to the last question, which is slightly tricky. So I have used fractions. Most of the students really get scared of fractions, especially if a student is of grade 8, like my student Aryan. In that case, it becomes very difficult. So we have to basically work with the equation. Let us see how do we work with the equation with fractions, right? So we have the equation given to us, as you can see here, minus 1 over 4x plus half equals to minus y minus 1 whole square. So we can take minus 1 over 4 common. If you do that, you get x, you have to multiply this by minus 4. So you get negative here and positive 2 here. So x minus 2 equals to minus y minus 1 whole square. Minus minus cancels and therefore, you could also write this as 1 over 4 x minus 2 equals to minus y minus 1 whole square. Well, some of you may not like to have uh, any coefficient for x minus 2. So you can also write this as x minus 2 equals to, that becomes plus, right? So both gets cancelled. So we get 4 times y minus 1 whole square. Now it becomes a standard equation which you have been working with. And clearly, you can get your solution from this particular equation. So I hope this challenge question, the challenge has been simplified. So that is kind of a hint. Try to work with the equation and get it in this particular form. Once you get it in this particular form, you can easily sketch it. So here is the sketch along with the direct, along with the calculations as shown here. You can compare your result with what we have here and I hope with this you understand all what we wanted to teach you in this particular video. So what we learn over here is that the transformational equation of a parabola which is basically y equals to a times x minus h whole square plus k can be written with p where p is the distance between the Focus, let me once again show you what is P. P is the distance between the focus and the vertex, right? So, focus and the vertex. So, this distance is what P is. And this value of P can be found very easily by using this calculation, which is one-fourth of one over A. It is inversely proportional to A. The constant is 1 over 4. So that helps you to figure out all these things. And the directrix, as you know, is same distance away. So that is how you get the values. And as you can see here, in the particular situation, we will have a constant value y equals to the vertex value, which is k. And you will take away p to get this point. For the focus, we have the same value as h, which is the axis, and you to that add the value of p to k, right? So k plus p, and you know this axis is always equals to x equals to h when it is a vertical graph. So all these calculations which I have shown is when it is vertical. Is that clear to you? Similar calculations you can do 
when the graph opens horizontally left or right as shown here so this i hope will help you visualize and understand how do we solve for finding the vertex the focus equation of axis and equation of directrix in any equation for a parabola so i hope you enjoyed the journey of learning with me and now with confidence you can do all these questions without memorizing the formulas thank you and all the best